We're excited to be back. Uh, love the hospitality we have in Frisco, and uh, it was a goal of ours at the uh, beginning of the season that uh, if we had a chance to win the Missouri Valley Conference, we have an opportunity to uh, fulfill a dream and a goal of coming back to Frisco and competing for a national championship. And can't say enough about uh, uh, the seniors and uh, the captains and the four guys uh, in front of us here. Is, uh, what a great leadership job they did, uh, especially through a lot of adversity that we had. And we just kept attacking the adversity and uh, mm -hmm. never letting us, never letting the adversity uh, get to us and, and uh, just keep finding a way. And uh, we had a lot of guys contribute to this uh, team. And it wasn't just uh, star players. We had some star players, but we had a, a roster full of guys that uh, uh, bought in and uh, did what they had to do to help the football team each Saturday to give us an opportunity to uh, play in this great game. So uh, we're excited to be here. We know we're playing a great opponent in James Madison. We think it's going to be a great four-quarter football game. And so we'll open up for questions. OK, we'll open up for questions for the student athletes initially, and then we'll have Coach Kleiman answer. So. First of all, uh, any questions from the floor about to the student athletes, please? Just raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. Back here in the back first. Question for Easton. Um, two years ago, you got the Bison to this game and weren't able to play. What's it like for you to be able to be back here starting in under center? Yeah, uh, really excited for an opportunity to, to play in this game. and. Um, you know, it was a really good team in 2015, and uh, to me, it's probably a little bit more special this year, uh, just because of the relationships that I have with the senior class. And uh, it's a big class and, and a group that's meant a lot to to our program. And so, excited for an opportunity to compete with those guys one more time. Okay, right up here. Trey, do you do you feel a little rivalry building with James Madison just from what's happened last year and then playing them again this year? Oh, uh, not really. Uh, we only played them. Uh, one time since I've been here, so I wouldn't consider that a robbery. I would just say they beat us last year, and we're looking to take our title back. Come on now. Here we go, Chuck. Uh, Jeff Kopak, the form. Um, Austin, there's some video of you with your elbow circulating out there. What's the story on that? Uh, third play of the game, ran zone. Uh, Either fell on it funny or whatever, and then uh, as I got up, I noticed I couldn't move it hardly, and just rotated it in, and it popped, and it felt better after that. So <laughs> it was good to go. Got to be a man. <laughs> Next question, right here. Luke. Nick, kind of reflect on expecting or Ross Uglum uh, by his report. Nick, kind of reflect on last year expecting that to be you know your final year and then going through the injury getting to come back for this final season and everything you guys have accomplished and kind of going out with your recruiting class yeah uh, it's kind of kind of crazy to think that i came full circle there but um no it's just really excited for the opportunity to come back this year and uh it's been a pleasure you know playing alongside these guys and um, our defense i thought it's been playing at a really high level lately and uh, we're just we're looking to go out on top a question over here george what you got? It's Steve Halls from WZMG Radio okay. East. Can you talk about how uh, you feel as far as going into this game um, instead of uh, uh, taking a look at how you felt maybe last year playing these guys, your preparation level, your confidence level coming in? Yeah, I, you know, I think they'd say something similar in the fact that, you know, we played a Friday night game uh, a year ago, and it, it's a short week. Uh, in, a, in a semifinal game like that, and so obviously with more time to prepare, uh, you're able to look at more things and uh, more time to develop a game plan and then become comfortable with it. So uh, I think both sides of the ball, special teams, and I think they'd say the same way. It just helps having more time to, to prepare. Okay, right next to him. Brian, Sean, various places. Um, <laughs> Trey, I just wanted to ask you, you're going through a lot of lasts this week. Um, last practice, last walkthrough, last road trip, last game. Um, are you taking it in? Do you think about it? Are you trying not to think about it? going into the championship knowing this is kind of it for you? Uh, kind of both. Like, I'm taking it in, but just trying to focus on the game. Uh, but uh, that experience we just had out there with uh, old players coming back and stuff like that, uh, when I came my sophomore year, it was kind of different for me. I was like, oh, this is pretty awesome. But it really meant a lot to me uh, going out there just then and, and talking to all them. If we didn't have this, I'd probably still be out there talking to them now. <laughs> but it's, it was great, and uh, I, I've just been taking it all in. Ready to get after it still, though, and focusing. OK, right here. Easton, these defensive backs are the secondary for James Madison. Are they, I mean, 
do they match up with like an Iowa that you, you've prepared for? Is this as good of a defensive back group as you've seen in prep? Yeah, it's a really talented group and a group that's played a lot of football together. You can tell uh, they're always on the same page and communicate really well together. Um, so you can tell they've played a lot of snaps and uh, they do a really good job rotating guys, uh, you know, the two corner spots and uh, guys playing nickel and different things like that. And so it's a really talented group and, and we definitely have our hands full. Chuck. Uh, Nick, can you speak to Austin's toughness? I don't know if you've ever dislocated your elbow and popped it back in on the next play, but yeah. what about I mean, the toughness of this? Yeah, our, our Rams definitely pride themselves in, in being tough, and you know, Austin's a great representation of that. So I, I've personally never had to do that. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Pyatt popped my shoulder back in for me. I, I don't do it myself, but no, they're, they're some tough dudes, no doubt. OK, any more questions for the student athletes? I hope. Well, guys, OK. Go back here to Steve. Yeah, uh, Nick, I just wanted to follow up on something Trey said. He made a comment, we're here to take our title back. Is there a collective, I don't know if anger is the right way, but uh, coming down here feeling like you got something to prove, just a little chip on your shoulder coming into this game after how it went last year against these guys? Yeah, without a question. Um, you know, we feel like we're entitled to uh, just as much as they are. So we want to go out on top, and um, there's no doubt that it's a collective effort, and all these guys are going to come out and, and play it and go out on top. So we we're definitely ready. Now, any more questions? Speak now or whatever. Okay, guys, let your play do the talking tomorrow. Thank you. You're dismissed. Now we'll open it up for questions for Coach Kleiman. Same deal. Okay, now we're ready. Jump right in. Great, thanks. Oh. <laughs> Chris, these, Easton touched on it, but I mean, this is completely different than a, a short week prep to a three week prep. What did you guys do differently as a staff to, to get ready for these guys with a game against them on film and, and really having three weeks to go over everything? Well, we, we spent more time, obviously, you just have more time, and so we were able to spend the week after. Uh, the semifinal game, focusing on getting a game plan ready as if we were playing that next weekend. And I thought that was uh, really productive for our staff to get that in place, had a few practices, and then obviously gave them some time off. Uh, they needed to get away. And then when we came back uh, after Christmas, uh, just kind of continuing to fine tune a lot of the things. And you know, when, when you have that much time, you know, some people can say you overanalyze and stuff. We, we looked at every game over the last two years that they had played. Uh, and, and formulated a game plan off of about maybe eight or ten, uh, eight or ten opponents, but uh, looked at everything to see how they'd react or how we'd react. Because we have to do a great job of trying to uh, find ways to, to, to crack this defense, just like I think they have to find ways to try to crack our defense. You're talking about the two best defenses in FCS without question. I mean, it's not even close. So it's going to come down to uh, who, can, who can manipulate running the football and who can make some explosive plays. Easton Stick started at quarterback for you guys in the semifinal. Should we expect any changes at quarterback? Are you going to surprise us at all? No, my man Easton's going to tee it up tomorrow, and I'm excited for him. So he's going to have a great opportunity. And, and uh, nobody prepares like Easton Stick. We have a lot of guys do unbelievable preparation, but everybody up here on this table would tell you um, he's still a 4.0 student, but son of a gun, he's there from 8 in the morning till 1 o'clock. Uh, I don't know if he's got a 10 and 11 o'clock class. Dr. Prashani, but he's there all day long uh, preparing. When, when we're all, it doesn't matter if it's September 1st or if it's uh, December 29th. He's there all day long preparing. And so he's, uh, he's earned this right to play in this championship game. I'm excited for him. OK, back here. Yeah, Brian. Now, Chris, I probably haven't asked you about this since early in the season, but Cordy Messingham is now 14 games into this. And obviously, you guys know each other in a long time. but. What has he meant, I guess, and what has he brought now that he's had this offense for essentially a full season? Yeah, it's it, Mess and I have a great relationship. And, and you know, I, when, when Tim left, and Tim did a phenomenal job for us, Coach P, he left, and, and I had an opportunity to hire uh, Coach Messingham. And a lot of people 
potentially agree, don't agree with it. When you can hire your best friend in this profession, a guy that you grew up with, played Little League baseball with, uh, went to college with, kind of went our separate ways, but always stayed in contact. But I, I know, forget X's and O's, the guy's a phenomenal football coach, but just the character of the man, uh, the family man, uh, the guy that uh, um, does an unbelievable job preparing. Uh, each week we've developed more and more offensively, and uh, he's integrated more and more of his ideas as the season's gone along. He didn't come in and make wholesale changes. He just implemented things, you know, a little bit in the spring, a little bit in the fall, and now throughout the season. And I think the offensive guys would tell you just – how much we've continued to evolve offensively. I think we've gotten better offensively. And that's that's a sign of a good football team as you continue to improve. But uh, just from a personal note, to, to bring a guy in that uh, you've been around since you're seven, eight years old, uh, it's it's a special time. You know, we're not getting any younger. And so for us to be able to have that opportunity and, and spend it together and, and have this run and have a chance to a national championship, I'm, I'm just thrilled for Courtney. Dom, Jalen, and Jalen, do you know kind of where you're going to be as far as availability from your defensive backs and what you'd like to do? Yeah, we're going to warm up an awful lot of guys, and, and uh, we're going to f talk to Doc Pyatt and, and Bobby and see who we think can go, and uh, uh, we'll uh, have everybody on a game-time decision. Chuck? Chris, uh, in a national stage when you get to this point, do you still get that FBS question, will NDSU move to FBS? Much. I, I don't get it probably as much as maybe uh, Matt Larson or Dean Brashani gets it, um, but I hope we don't. I mean, I, I love the stage we're on. Uh, in, in, in time, maybe it will happen, but I think it's because the Power Five is going to branch off and it's the group of five and whatever FCS teams can come to that level. I think that's probably down the road somewhere, but uh, I don't get it personally, no. And when you look at some of these lower tier bowl games, does that give you a pause to think that when you, when you compare it to this run that you're on? Absolutely. I, I love the playoff run, and I uh, wouldn't change it for anything. You know, and uh, I, I know the people of Frisco. I don't know how many they had for the bowl game out there, but I know we're going to have a bigger crowd uh, out here at Toyota Stadium than they had at the bowl game a, a couple weeks ago. And, and I think the bowl season's great. I think it's great for everybody to have an opportunity to participate and everybody to have an opportunity to play in a bowl game and continue to develop young players and stuff. But uh, for us right now at North Dakota State, uh, the playoff system works, and, and we really enjoy it. I, I think our fans really like it too. I, I think – you know, if you had a bowl game and that would start to get watered down maybe as, oh, we're not going to as good of a bowl game. Well, you're always going to the same playoff system. Now what do you do when you get to the playoffs? Here on the right. Chris, defensively, where does this unit rank? You and I talked preseason. They had a chance to be really special. Is this the best you've had maybe? It's pretty close. You know, that 2013 defense was tough. I saw an awful lot of guys out there at the alumni gathering. Uh, you know, when you see Marcus and, and Kyle and Cole and, and Colton, and, and boy, there are, some, there are some great players that are playing at the next level. And, um, but uh, we've continued to improve this year. Uh, and I think we're, we're deeper in the defensive line, although we rotated a lot of guys in 2013. That's be the closest thing to compare it to in the years that I've been here. Uh, but uh, we're deeper in the defensive line. We don't have maybe a like Kyle Emanuel that's going to have 15 sacks or something. But uh, uh, I just we're playing really fast and playing really well together. And uh, we'll have a huge challenge because uh, JMU is a, a really talented offense. Up here. Or, yeah. Okay. Coach, you talked about not having a Kyle Emanuel. You kind of had one in Greg Minardi you should have going into this season. Talk a little bit about how the pass rush unit has, has developed from game one to now the national championship game. Yeah, there's, you lose an All-American like Greg. It's, you know, somebody's got to step up, and multiple guys have stepped up, and that's – I mean, we're excited for Greg. He's going to have an opportunity to play again next year. But, you know, the Tusca brothers, Caleb, Stanley, our inside guys have stepped up. Uh, we're able to rotate, keep guys fresh. Uh, we probably aren't going to have that guy that has multiple sacks, you know, or double-digit sacks and stuff. But uh, uh, we've been relentless. We've done a really nice job pressuring the passer. And I think the key for us tomorrow is not so much the sacks. It's just keeping uh, Shore contained. He's such a dangerous guy out of the pocket, stepping up into the pocket. That's going to be the whole key to the game is can we keep him uh, from making the explosive play uh, by the scramble. I'll ask you the same question I asked Trey. Is, do you feel like there's a rivalry growing between these two programs just because you're at the top 
level now. Both schools are, are pretty darn good. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, I had that question asked me, and I appreciated Trey's answer as well. Uh, no, there's a tremendous amount of respect um, I have for Coach Houston and, and the JMU team, but not necessarily a rivalry, uh, simply because we, we don't play them every year like we do a Valley team and sometimes multiple times in a year because of the playoff system. Uh, I just I have a tremendous amount of respect for how JMU does it and uh, uh, how they play defense, how they run the football. Uh, if this continues on and, and uh, God willing, we continue to both have great programs, maybe that'll potentially happen. But I don't know, two times, not quite, but uh, uh, maybe down the line. Anthony Susano, NCAA.com. Uh, going back to injuries, Coach, just what does it say about this team to overcome all these setbacks to make it back here? Yeah, we talked about it after the first time Greg got hurt. Uh, Greg got hurt in the second day of practice. Menard did with a torn ACL, and I think we've had seven, eight, nine torn ACLs this year, and uh, we're going to be upwards of 20 to 25 surgeries at the end of the year. Uh, and we talked about it and said, mediocre teams get destroyed when adversity hits. Good teams survive it. Great teams get better because of it. And uh, our guys became better each week because of the adversity we faced. And uh, every one of these guys has been in that position. Nick DeLuca had to come in and play when we lost Carlton. Trey Dempsey had to come in and play when we lost CJ. Easton Stick had to come in when we played and, and we lost Carson. That's NDSU football. That's the culture of a championship program when the next guy up uh, has the ability to play just as much at a, at a high level uh, and, and his brothers are counting on him. And that's the thing. That's the brotherhood that, that it's hard to explain, but uh, uh, it's so fun to see these guys uh, handle the adversity. Got somebody? Yes, Steve. Uh, Chris, what have you picked up on from your guys here over these last couple of weeks or so about their excitement level and having another chance to play this James Madison team? Well, when we came in after the Sam Houston win in the semifinals and we're, we're chanting in the locker room and screaming, winner camp, winner camp, because we know we, we have an opportunity to spend three more weeks together and to grind and uh, we're in pads and, and it's, it's, uh, it's tough. You know, when you're a true freshman and you usually are done by Halloween and now the first of the year happens and you're still in pads, that's a long season. Uh, but our guys embrace it. You know, and that was one of the models we had is embrace the target on your back and uh, we've embraced that. And uh, it, it's just when you have guys in, like Nick and, and Trey and Austin, and I'll get Easton again next year, but when you have guys like that to uh, spend every, every opportunity we can with those guys, uh, I, I know how blessed I am because these guys are terrific football players, and President Rashani knows it, Matt Larson knows it. They're better individuals. They are better individuals. What they do in our community, what they do of community service, how they handled the, the kids at the Miracle League last night, that's what makes me the most proud. I got to ask you, the Kirby Sparts playing the national championship. I know you sp spoke at Georgia before the year. It's the second time in three years you've spoke at a team that's playing for the national championship. Do you believe that they're Shared ideas, vice versa. You're taking stuff from Clemson and Georgia, and vice versa. Well, I'd like to think so, but I don't know if you, if Kirby would say that. I know it'd be interesting, but uh, no, I was, I was had the opportunity to speak at uh, at Georgia, and uh, w were able to share a lot of ideas, and and had a good opportunity one on one with Kirby, and I have a good friend that's a, an offensive analyst, Jay Johnson, that's on that staff, and uh, played with him in college as well, so. Uh, it's it's neat to be associated with those programs, and I had an opportunity to text back and forth with with Coach Sweeney before they played in their semifinal game, and, and it's just um, because of the success we've had at North Dakota State, uh, and I always say we've had at North Dakota State, it's provided myself a number of those opportunities, and uh, I, and it's due to these guys, it's due to these guys that I have the chance to have some of those oppor opportunities.